Oh my God. All right, Abdul, we'll start with you. I'm a freshman and a computer engineering major. You're a freshman from Kuwait? Yes. Okay. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Hao Yu Wang. I'm an uh, accounting major, so uh, junior, yes, junior. And uh, I'm from China, but I've been living in Singapore for the past like uh, over a decade. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Hi, my name is Vivek. Uh, I'm a second year major right now studying aerospace engineering. Uh, I was born in India, but I've lived almost all of my life in Kuwait. Hi, my name is Julie. Um, I'm a sophomore studying biomedical engineering. I'm originally from Egypt, but I've lived uh, almost all my life in Dubai. And on Tuesday, we talked about uh, homogeneous cultures, okay? We talked about cultures that have very few people who are A, born our societies, countries, right? Where very few people are born outside of that country. And in particular, we, we two of the volunteers were from Korea and one was from China. And in Korea and China, almost everybody, meaning like 96 and a half to 97 percent, have Chinese or Korean ancestry. Most people, when you see Koreans, so we talked about this, you like they're Koreans. You kind of have a real sense of who they are. But you all have experiences that are very different from that. Proportion of foreign-born residents and, you know, UAE, so this is UAE. Where, where, where are you a citizen? Where are you a citizen, actually? Yeah. I in UAE? In Dubai, yeah. Okay, Dubai. I got you. Yeah. All right. So you took, so you were born in Egypt, but you I have citizenship. In in I don't have the citizen, like, I just live there, but I don't have, like, they don't live there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hold the mic really close. Yeah. Okay. So do you consider yourself Emirati? No. <laughs> yeah, you don't? You no, can. Cons- what do you call yourself? Egyptian. Egyptian. Yeah. Okay, got Like you. when someone asks me, I tell them I'm Egyptian. Okay. Where, got I, you. When they start talking about Egypt, I go like, oh, I don't live there. I live in Dubai. Okay. So here, so this is the very beginning of something, right? So look at UAE has the highest. This is the country, the United Arab Emirates. This is the country with the the largest number of foreigners living in that country as residents. That, so kind of like not exactly even expats always, right? But, okay, so think about that. Remember Korea was, what it was, Cuba was less than 1%, and the Emirates is almost 90%. And then we have Kuwait. So, Viva, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean, as, from oh, my wait. experience living in Kuwait, yeah, there's a lot of Indian people especially. Yeah. Like from numbers I've heard, um, just the amount of Indian expats you have living in Kuwait outnumber even the Kuwaiti population. Here, go to the next, go to the next slide. Yeah. Okay, there are the numbers, actually. So non-nationals in Kuwait is 70, 70% of the population. In Indians, Indians, it's about 33%, I think. So it's about the same number as Kuwaitis. Yeah. When you say Kuwaitis, well, hang on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back to you for a second. So... The mere fact that you were, like here in the United States, look, hang on, you're born in Egypt. Both your parents are Egyptian? Both have Egyptian passports. Yes, and I have an Egyptian passport. You have an Egyptian passport. And we think about how, you know, if you came to the United States 18 years ago and you lived 18 years of your life here, you would would have residency of some sort. You would have an American passport. Okay. That's not easy to do. No, with the it's Emirates. not not easy. Like you, it's very rare there. Like they don't just give their citizenship or their passport away. But at the very least, you would call yourself the fact that you call yourself Egyptian. You lived your basically your entire life in Dubai. Yeah. Like you're not Emirati Egyptian or no. Egyptian Emirati. You're no. just Egyptian. I'm just Egyptian. Which, which yeah. says something about the Emirates, right? So how did were like, you born? I don't think he calls himself. No, I don't. Kuwaiti. I was born in India. Yeah, I spent like the first year of my life growing up in India with my grandparents. Okay. My par- my dad worked in Kuwait mostly, and so after that first year, we moved all to Kuwait. You you all moved to Kuwait, and you consider yourself what if if I ask you what what's your nationality? I'd consider myself Indian. Yeah. Indian. 
So, so you're the two of you are very similar, right? Actually, like all my friends back home, like in Dubai, uh, not a single person would like if they're not originally Emirati, they wouldn't call themselves Emirati, like Lebanese, Palestinian, yeah. Jordanian. They won't add the Emirati part to it. Mm -hmm. Which may, which is, can you go back go back a slide? So just look at Kuwaitis. That's twenty eight percent, twenty seven percent, basically of the population is Kuwaiti, would be considered native or national, Kuwaiti national. Right. Hey, so here's my question. Let's just start here. And how you, let's start with you. What's it like living in a place, in a nation that is so heterogeneous? Like the culture is just uh, so, it's, it's the opposite of homogenous. What's, what's that like? Um, I feel that um, if you live in a place where there's so many of different cultures, eventually, the, after years, the culture tend to mix with each other. And that's what happened to Singapore. And uh, essentially, um, there isn't like a Indian culture, Chinese. There are like certain areas that people, uh, races still keep their own culture. But what um, happened eventually was that people created a culture called Singaporean culture. Mm -hmm. And... Um, uh, in Singapore, people sp uh, speak English a lot different from what we do. Uh, we call it Singlish. And the language... Wait, what do you call it? Singlish. Singlish Singapore. Like, Singlish, yeah. Okay, okay I get it. it's like the unique Singaporean version yeah. of English. Yeah. Which sounds very British, though, yeah. right? Because it was a British colony. <laughs> like a Singlish. And um, we notice in the, the Singlish language, there's a mixture of um, different languages. Um, be it Chinese Mandarin, or Chinese dialects, or Malay, the Malay language, or uh, Hindi, Tamil, just, just all mixed in it. And there's a dish in Singapore actually called uh, rojak. Rojak mm -hmm. is a mixture, it's like a salad, like mixture of different um, like pineapples, potatoes, etc. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And we call ourselves rojak people because we are essentially just a mixture of everything. Wait, how do you pronounce that? Or how do you spell it? R O J A K, I think. Uh huh. Rodak. Rodak. Okay. Um, so is is you? So wait, what do you? So you call? Where were you born? China. You're born in China, yeah. and then you moved to Singapore when I was eight. When you were eight. Yeah. And what? When if someone says, "Hey, where are you from?" You say China? Singapore. I'll you say, say China. China. Yeah. Yeah. And when, if I say if I say, "Hey, what's your culture?" What's your culture? I would still say China because um, most of my um, norms, my um, identity, my um, like morals and values, they're more uh, still Chinese. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's an interesting um, comparison to my little brother, who is um, seven years younger than me. Uh -huh. So I came to Singapore when I was eight. So he was one when he moved to Singapore. So his culture more conformed to Singaporean culture than uh, Chinese culture. And in, in, in that for you, but, Singa but you just said Singaporean culture is this in incredible mix, right? Yeah. So he, you mean, what does that mean in actuality in terms of him, like his thinking and behavior? If he's more adapted to Singaporean culture than Chinese culture, what does that mean for him? Um, it means he is, for example, he is uh, a lot more open. He's more extroverted because... Um, the Chinese culture is one of the most um, introverted cultures among the different cultures that mm -hmm. mixes in uh, Singapore. So I am uh, more introverted. He is more extroverted because they have so many different factors that um, uh, would change his thinking, mm -hmm. the way how he thinks. Hey, let me... Okay, okay. Yo, man, that's wild. Okay, and I we were brought up in the same household. Like, you really see all the nationalities in Kuwait. That it, this is a melting pot of a space, right? Um, go, but go forward. I just want to show you Singapore, just in case you don't know where Singapore is. So, you know, right on the southern tip of Malaysia, right? It was a British colony. And so, you know, you're right in, in, a, in a sense between Malaysia, Indonesia, China, like all these spaces coming together. One more, go to one more slide. I want to show you this. So you kind of, people kind of have a sense of this. So here, this is the language breakdown that I just pulled off. Uh, so English, Mandarin, that. So a quick question for you. I want to just stay with you for a second. Like, how much are, 
So when, go, go back to your brother. What does what language? What, what does your brother speak? English, uh, and Chinese, Mandarin? and English, Mandarin and yeah? English. Okay. But he's definitely more proficient in English than Mandarin than me, the otherwise. Uh huh. So for you, it's Mandarin more. More than proficient, English. yeah. Go, yeah. Go, Abdul. What, okay, so t tell it what. What's it like living in Kuwait in this space with so many people from around the world? If you go back to the Kuwait slide, yeah. So from my experience, I met a lot of people from different countries, uh, mostly uh, Egyptians uh, or Jordanians or Syrians. But in the school that I went to, there weren't many. There were mostly Kuwaitis. So but, you, but you, you are a Kuwaiti national, right? Yes, I am. Hold the mic a little closer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, all right, go ahead. And uh, I saw them in like extracurricular activities. So I would go to uh, a basketball club. I would see a lot of them there. I would go to maybe uh, an after school activity. I would see a lot of them there. But in my school itself, there weren't many. Okay, so when, so when Vivek, Vivek says, hey, I was born in India, but I spent my whole life in Kuwait. And even do, do you see him as Kuwaiti or do you see him as Indian? Like, how do you see, like, how do you see him? I mostly see him as Indian because I associate a person's nationality uh, with uh, his ethnicity and with what passport he holds. Okay, so here in the United States, like, we don't, we don't really, we wouldn't do that, right? Like, if he's, I mean, we do and we don't, right? It's an odd thing, but, dude, you spent, if you spend your whole life here, and do you speak Arabic? I know words and phrases. Like we had Arabic class every year. I'd, I'd forget it every summer, but I, I know enough to just recognize a few words. So if he spoke, do you speak Arabic? Are you, you, well, yeah, because yes, you're Egyptian. Yes, I'm yeah, yeah. But you speak Egyptian Arabic, right? So like, yeah, there's different dialects. I speak yeah. the Egyptian one. But do you, have you kind of picked up the Emirati I've, dialect? Like I understand it, not. Fully, fully, but of course I understand it and I know what I'm saying and different dialects because I know like I know the Jordanian, Syrian, yeah. Lebanese, all those like dialects. But, but so, uh, I uh, I speak the Egyptian one. Yeah, but so if it's for people who don't know, I mean, everyone says e e that Egyptians speak like a really unique version of Arab like it's, of Arabic yeah, yeah. Arabic, yeah. it's like unique -ish. <laughs> it's yeah, weird like, pe like people know who the Egyptians are when they encounter you could the yeah Egyptians. anyone like who talks in Egyptian that like you can tell if he's Egyptian uh -huh. or not like or if she's Egyptian or not okay so Vivek so Abdul is saying like okay he you didn't spend you have not spent a lot of time around people who are not Kuwaiti nationals Mm -hmm. I mean, you did kind of engage, but not. Do you have any close friends, people who are not Kuwaiti nationals? I have some friends, but they're not close to me. I have a couple of friends who are Egyptian and a friend who's uh, Lebanese. So you're, so you're 30 Kuwaitis. You are 30% of the population of Kuwait. 30%, man. So just think about this in a place like the United States. Dude, think about Korea, okay, where you're, ni you're 90 seven percent of the population this guy is imagine 30 percent imagine you're koreans and you're living in the peninsula of korea you remember you know remember think about last class and yet the vast majority of people that you interact with seven out of ten people you engage with day after day are not native indigenous koreans they're from outside of korea and so this is your experience right so I think, uh, I think a part of that is due to the culture back home. So if, even if you can, you can see over here, when a lot of Kuwaitis or a lot of Arabs uh, come out to study abroad, they usually hang out with people who are Arab or from the same country. Yeah. And I've seen it here with a lot of Kuwaitis who graduate and they only hang out with Kuwaitis. So why, why, why is that? What, what would you say? What, what, do you think, what, do, what do you think is behind that? I think because of the culture and the traditions that we were brought upon, it's kind of hard to come out here and to get to know people and to kind of understand their traditions and cultures. It's kind of hard for people who are, who are in another country for 18 years and in a Middle Eastern country who's not westernized a lot. 
So when you come out here to the U.S., it's kind of difficult to get to know other people who don't share the, uh, those uh, values, those morals, those traditions. So, Vivek, do you, who do you hang out with here at Penn State? I've got a whole bunch of friends. Uh, they're sitting right here. Uh, like, from where are they from? Well, from wh yeah, where are they from? <laughs> my, my roommate's American. Uh, I hang out with him very often. I've also got two friends I graduated high school with, both from Kuwait, a Kuwaiti guy and also an Egyptian dude. Korean and with, Egyptian guy. Yeah. Right? And, and how about other, in, because there are so many Indians, mm -hmm. from, like you're really connected to Indian culture. Uh, that's like a 50-50. I, I, I would say I'm connected just through my parents. Yeah. So like I know Indian culture that way. But like every time I, every summer when I go back to visit my grandparents, like usually the first things they tell me is that your Malayalam, which is the language I speak, has gotten so much worse. Like they can barely understand me. And that happens every year. Uh -huh. So you've then become this person. So, here, so you got thrust out of your culture. You go to Kuwait. The Kuwaitis, don't, you, you're not really part of Kuwaiti culture because it's really clear that you're not Kuwaiti, right? Yeah. Like you're not, you're, you're not Emirati. Like they, they let it be, no, I mean, it's not like they let it be, you're just not, right? You're just not. It's not, it's not they let it be known. It's just, yeah, it's just not. Like you just not. aren't. Like I would never, ever consider myself Emirati. No. And, and do you, and, but do the two of you ever really want to be part of like Kuwaiti or Emirati culture? Like are you trying to really... Have you, have you ever really tried to, do, or do people like you, right, these foreign nationals, right, the foreigners, non-nationals, I get, do you try to integrate? Are you, like, because here in the United States, hang on, do you try to integrate? Me personally, no, but uh, I do know a lot of people that you could tell, because Emirati is dressed in, like, a different way than, yeah. it's just, like, you know, their um, national way of, like, dressing and all that. Um, I have a, lot, a couple of friends that, that I know that are not Emiratis, but they do try to dress like that and like the Kandora and the Abaya. Mm. Um, I'm guessing that's their way of integrating or trying to be. Uh -huh. So there are obviously some people that try to be, but not everyone, no. And so do you feel, is, is one of the things, or how does that impact your sense of self being really multicultural, like multinational, the two of you, right? You're living in this land where it's really hard to be part of it, you know? And by the way, when I was in, in my time in Kuwait, I mean, I remember um, just the Indian community in Kuwait, uh, but in, in Dubai, every time I've gone to Dubai, I stayed in the area of the Gold Souk, which is like the Indian, they, that's a part of the... It's the, old Dubai. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Like old yeah. part of Dubai, yeah. Yeah, yeah so it's, it's always... It's, that was always really fascinating to me, you know? Like, I didn't want to go stay at some hotel at, like, the Burj Khalifa or something. Like, it would be right where the action was, you know? So I'm aware of the, the kind of... The, the communities of people living, trying to, like, live inside and yet outside of these communities right i feel like maybe that's why like as i said people do try to integrate themselves and be like them but not a lot like from what i see because we're all mostly also surrounded by people that aren't emiratis like my friend group back um in dubai lebanese uh palestinian jordanian egyptian mm -hmm. so like that's what i'm you know like not everyone is trying to change because everyone, almost everyone is not from there. It's not from there, yeah, right? Yeah, so, so they, no one's really like forced or trying to yeah, like fit why? in. Because it's just like everyone's fitting in because it's a very multinational place. Yeah, like why would you? Like you're different, I'm different. You're different, I'm yeah. everyone's different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why would you try to be? Yeah, like you, you know, like, have you been to Dubai, bro? Have you yeah, I've yeah. been a couple of times. I mean, you know, you know right? You, you go, have you you've been to Dubai? I assume. Yeah, I've been. Yeah. So you know when you go to this city, it's, I mean, it's like being in New York City. I mean, you're just, there's, it's like being in Queens. Queens, New York. Is anybody from Queens here, by the way? Who you're from Queens? Dude, the, the most multicultural geographic region on the face of the earth is Queens, New York. Like, there, there's not a space anywhere in the world in which there is more rep representation by people from different parts of the world than Queens, New York, right? I mean, it's so, but Dubai kind of comes in second, you know?